Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, a show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me as always is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Sheikh, we've been discussing uh, Jama'a Salah and also the Imam of the Jama'a Salah. And the question I wanted to ask you was Is it sufficient for us? when we identify um, an Imam for the Salah that you know he knows between Haram and Halal and he knows the Ahkam laws is that sufficient and, and we know a little bit about his his background is that okay or do we have to do a very very full you know, thorough background check on, on his Adala and, and, and on his uh, knowledge of, of Islam أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. Well, with regard to your question, yes, you can rely on this um, aspect of, I mean, the righteousness of this person. In overall, you have friends who, let's say, pray behind him, or you know the Imam roughly. That he is a person, pious person, he comes to the, to the markaz or to the mosque. And in overall, you know that this person's conduct and character is a good character and conduct. You can rely on it and pray behind him, that's fine. There's no issue with it. And what if I doubt the Imam? If I doubt that, oh, this person may not be righteous, or he might not have the correct uh, qara'ah, and, and maybe he'll make mistakes in salah. Is it okay for me to f continue to follow this uh, Imam in, in the Jama'ah or should I pray Farada? With regard to the first part of the question, you must achieve and uh, you must acquire the adala of uh, this individual, this Imam. In other words, you cannot just follow an Imam that you're in doubt of. You, you, you never know him and those who pray behind him, you, you don't know them. Let's say you go to a village or to a city and you go to a mosque and you see people are praying and Imam is there and you have some doubts. You cannot just follow the, that Imam, an individual, and pray behind him. So you have to acquire and attain that this person has adala and he's righteous. Otherwise, you cannot pray. And thus we have in fiqh what is known as ihrazul adala, that you have to attain the adala, that he has these features and conditions of the adala that I've mentioned in the last episode. With regard to the second part of the question, uh, there's no issue with it if you have doubts about that if he read correctly or not. No, that's fine. You can follow him. I mean, uh, the salah is correct. There's no issue with it. It's just a doubt about his recitation. That's no, there's no issue. Unless it's real. I mean, you can hear him that he's reading the words or letters mistakenly, then you have to correct it by yourself. And if that, if that continues, then you cannot follow this Imam because he's not reading properly. He doesn't know the, uh, the rules and the qawaad of the Arabic language, for example, or the Quranic, Quranic uh, language, you know, the, the Quranic verses. In this case, you, you cannot follow him. Ascent, ascent. Sheikh, a bit of a controversial question. There is an individual who meets the criteria of being an imama of the jama'ah. Maybe he's, he's righteous and he knows all the ahkam laws in regards to salah. But he follows a marja that some may say is questionable or some may say is not a, uh, a marja of, of uh, adala or a marja of, of, of qualification. Is it okay for me to pray behind this individual? The Sayyid says that you have to go back to the conditions and the criteria of the Adala. If he meets those criteria, that's fine, you can follow him. Regardless of who he, of who he follows as a marja. For example, uh, he's adolescent, he's sane, he's Shi'at Na'ashari, um, he's Adil of legitimate birth, and he performs the Salah correctly without any mistakes. 
in this case you can follow him that's fine whoever he follows as a marja uh, there's no issue with it mashallah um so you know based on that also you know giving the benefit of the doubt and, and making sure that this person has um, you know is trustworthy and so forth what about if i visited a new mosque and i don't know the um the imam of the jama'a but I see that there is a, you know, the, the quite a lot of people are praying behind this person. So um, is that okay for me to join? Is that enough indication that this person is trustworthy and worthy of being prayed behind? Um, because obviously I haven't got time to actually go and investigate. And the jama'a has already started as well. The, the salah has already started. So is that okay for me to join that, that jama'a? You see, as mentioned many times with regard to this uh, condition, that uh, righteousness or the adala is to do with practicing the good and the obligatory acts, such as uh, salah, psalm, and so forth, and refraining from the evil acts, such as uh, drinking alcohol, uh, listening to music, and so forth. If the imam is adil, in other words, has taqwa, Pious, he is pi has piety, and he refrains from these forbidden acts, and he applies and implements the wajib acts, and in overall, um, he is recognized through good practices. People know him that he is of good uh, akhlaq, of good practice in amal. In overall, you can follow that imam. That's fine. As I've said, um, you must achieve and attain that. He is Adil. By looking at the people around, around him, maybe by asking him, for example, or, or, or asking others about him, and so forth, that should uh, really um, um, solve the situation. And we don't have to go through in-depth research about his background and what he did, what he was. It's just um, the apparent Adala will be uh, sufficient. Ahsant, mashallah. Shaykhna. What happens when I follow an Imam uh, in Salah, but the Imam was praying a Nafila prayer, or, or he wasn't praying, um, he was praying a different prayer to me? Do I have to repeat my Salah? No, it is not wajib and obligatory for the one who prayed behind an Imam who used to pray Nafila to repeat the Salah. salah. That's fine. Um, there's no issue with it. Because your intention was to follow the Imam and the obligatory salah, and he was praying nafila, so that's fine. Uh, you follow and pray whatever you prayed, and the imam, whatever he prayed, that's fine. Sheikhna, we are um, praying behind the, the, the imam, and this person's imam recites some of the words incorrectly. Uh, what are we supposed to do as, as followers of the jama'ah? In this case, if uh, these words were recited uh, mistakenly or in the wrong way, then you as a follower, as a ma'amum, should correct it by reciting by yourself. So you correct it by, for yourself. So let's say if he, if he said, Malaka yawmiddin, not Maliki yawmiddin. So you have to recite by yourself Maliki yawmiddin. To correct that mistake um, that the Imam did by reading it in, in the right way. Shaykh, what happens if um, I'm praying behind an Imam, I'm praying Maghrib Salah and I'm not 100% happy with the Imam that he prayed the Maghrib prayer correctly? Am I supposed to repeat my prayer? Not at all because you have doubts about this issue so you can, uh, the Salah is valid and you can just go with, with, with the Salah you prayed, that's fine, there's no issue, there's no repeat for it. Shaykh, what is the duty of uh, Ma'amun when um, he notices or identifies that the Imam has mispronounced or said something incorrectly in, in the Salah? Should he correct the Imam or should he just correct himself? Sometimes you see the Imam, he forgets, for example, to do the act of Qunut, um, for example or he stands up for, for the third rak'ah without doing tashahud. In this case, um, as I've said, you cannot follow the Imam in his mistakes. 
But the best thing is to remind the Imam by saying Allahu Akbar, for example. You try to remind the Imam and telling him that uh, you know you should stand or sit in this position or do the qunut or leave the qunut if it's not in its right location. Just to remind him that uh, what you did was not in the right place. And usually the Imams would uh, recognize. recognize quickly and they would try to you know, uh, correct. correct the fault straight away. I said. But what about if it's like a Quranic verse, uh, if they're reciting a surah and uh, maybe they, they forget an ayah or something, is it mandatory upon us to, you know, I, I indicate and, and identify that, oh, you've, you've said something wrong. For example, they might say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, uh, Maliki Yu'midin. Should we be saying Rahman Rahim? Should we be shouting that out to the Imam? As I've said, uh, you have to, for yourself, read out this mm -hmm. incorrect or missed ayah for yourself. So you read it out for yourself, and the Imam has his own hukum because he, he didn't know or he didn't actually, he just made a mistake in which he didn't recognize. So for yourself, you read the ayah again and you correct it. Shaykhna, how do we pray like farada uh, jama'ah? I mean, when we come into the mosque and you know, we, want, we want to pray farada, sh is it okay to you know, stand with the congregation but pr pray for other, or should we be separate and, you know, pray separately on our own? We have to make sure that when we go for such places where there are jama'ah prayers is, is uh, hold and people are praying in jama'ah and I want to pray quickly and leave the mosque, I have to make sure that I do not um, insult uh, the Imam of the Jama'ah or the Jama'ah itself or the Mosque it's itself by praying alone and, and Farada mm -hmm. away from the Jama'ah. Sometimes it brings some kind of, uh, gives a bad image to the Mosque, for example, that there is a Jama'ah and this individual is praying alone. Or sometimes you see there are two groups, one group Farada, one group Jama'ah. And that's of course not accepted if it's causing some kind of harm to the Imam of the Jama'ah or some kind of insult, disrespect for example. No, you cannot actually uh, do this. The best thing is to pray somewhere else or after the Jama'ah when they finish. Or the best thing is to pray with the Jama'ah to get the reward. And uh, it's just a few minutes, uh, you would be more delayed unless you're in an urgent situation. Then maybe you can pray it at home or somewhere else away from this Jama'ah because if you you know, if you break the sanctity of the mosque and the jama'ah, then that's by itself is some kind of disobedience, and that's not right. So we try to either pray the jama'ah or stay away from this jama'ah, pray somewhere else, and keep the sanctity of the uh, jama'ah prayer uh, in that center of that mosque. Shaykh, what if I, I've come into the mosque and jama'ah salat is going on, and if I, 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 I'm in a hurry, and I know I can pray for other uh, before the Jama'ah finishes the Salah. However, the me praying for other will lead to insulting uh, the Imam or, or the congregation. Am I still allowed to pray for other? You cannot insult uh, the, the Imam, imam Jama'ah of the group who are following the Imam. No, you cannot. So you have to make sure, as I've said, to find somewhere else and pray. Or pray afterwards when they finish. Or pray between the two salah when they do dhikr, tasbihat al zahra alayhi salam. You start praying your wajib prayer and then you leave straight away. Asan, thank you very much, Sheikh. And thank you to all the viewers for joining us on this discussion. Inshallah, we'll have new topics and more discussions in the following Ahkam SOS episodes. Uh, until then, we would like to encourage you guys to join the Jama'ah and not to pray for Allah, inshallah, with your brothers and sisters to create some sort of unity and community with the Shia, inshallah. Until the next episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.